All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Rocky Blogs. It's been a long time because I haven't had anything to do and I've been working a lot. Um, I was waiting on Aeropack retainer for the 5 inch Punisher. Saying I don't have anything to do is actually really inaccurate, I guess, but uh, I have a bunch of rockets that need worked on. But at any rate, my dad's gonna be in this video because our wild man package came with the best sticker a rocket person can get on a package. Yeah, it was a pretty heavy box. So what we're gonna try and do here is uh, go from small to large. Let's see what do we got. All right, K1275. Sweet. Um, I just got the hardware for that from John Clifton while we were or while I was at Airfest. So I figured we should have a motor to put in that hardware, but. That one's technically yours of the purchases to alleviate that. And then uh, didn't have many launch opportunities. Thanks a lot, COVID. But it is what it is. So we'll get into what we got here. Obviously, you guys saw the K1275, the H550 Super Thunder. I actually kind of forgot the smaller motors that I ordered. So this is exciting to me. Uh, I218. I don't even know what case that's for. 38360. Okay, yeah. I just remember I wanted a couple of smaller motors that we could uh, screw around with just in case. And then a J, another J800. This is like one of my favorite 54 millimeter Aerotech motors because it's relatively cheap for a 54 and still super loud and pretty hard hitting motor. I actually have a K1100 loaded over there, which is you know, this, but with one extra grain, that's a three grain. But, uh, I flew one of those in, uh, the four inch Mad Dog and it went like, what, 4,200 feet or mm -hmm. something like that. I should put the K1100 in that and see, I, I wanted to put it in the three inch Punisher, but that'll go like 10,000 feet and I don't know <laughs> if I want to fly that high here. But, all right, so that's all the small stuff. So I guess now is when we get into the bigger things. So for one, Right off the bat, oh, I know what those are. Those are the ones we're not showing yet. Okay, we need the other box. Legal reasons at the moment, my motor, <laughs> unless you <laughs> want to trade. But uh, in these two boxes, let's see if I can uh, get you guys a close up so you can read it. The 5120 Blue Thunder load, the M1780 Blue Thunder. So uh, my dad's had his level three rocket ready to go for a minute, but hasn't had a chance to fly it and now has the precarious choice of flying the M1780 or the M1297 that we've got over there. Thoughts? Now that it's here, it's tempting. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching some videos of that motor and I'm kind of uh, a little upset I didn't order another one of those, but what I ordered for myself instead is uh, a motor that's been super, super enticing to me. Oh, is it all broken up in weird grain amount? I think it is. The other 5120, the newest load for that case, the Aerotech M2050 Propellant X. And that's a uh, pretty brutal motor from what I understand. I haven't seen any of it, but mm. the Propellant X stuff is really, really cool. And uh, Taylor flew his 4-inch Punisher at like 18,000 feet, I think, on an M1830. So... Obviously, I gotta try and beat that, <laughs> but his rocket's lighter than mine because he doesn't have internal fillets. At any rate, um, I think I'm gonna grab another one of these from our local vendor because I told him that I wanted one and I think he's got them. So I wanna put one in the four inch Punisher and then one in the five inch Punisher just to kind of demonstrate the uh, difference of drag going up an inch in diameter will create. Because um, I imagine them 2050 in the four inch Punisher in mine We'll probably push 17 to 18 ish then that five inch would probably go like 12 13. i don't know those are just numbers off the top of my head so that's probably not even close to accurate but uh yeah so those uh those are the two m motors we purchased uh technically like i said for legal reasons i purchased um i mean you can have one so like you can say this motor is yours or that M1297 is yours <laughs> and we're still not breaking any rules. But I did buy these under my name in case anyone wants to try and spread that kind of a wildfire. <laughs> these are purchased under my name on level three certified. If you want my Tripoli number, if you really want to dig that deep into it, you can have it. Anyway, 
two M's, a K, a J, and two I motors. The reason this package was still so expensive, uh, here's the liner for the motor. Now, behind this, behind the camera is a seven and a half inch all fiberglass iris I built from scratch. Uh, well, with a lot of help from a lot of people, Jim Scarpine cut the fins for me. They're quarter inch fiberglass. And my original plan was to fly that rocket on an M2200 skid mark for my level three. And when did I build that thing? I started building when I was 17, mm -hmm. just before I was 18. Yep. And I'm uh, turning 26 this year. So um, almost nine years in development, that rocket has still not flown. So the two skid mark motors that I had a real big fascination with were the M2200 because that's the iconic one and the N2801 which obviously you can't get anymore. But lucky for us, Aerotech recently put out something that's a pretty good substitute for it. And that is what this liner is for. If you'll recall, when I got the five inch plancher, I also unboxed an Aerotech 98-15360 hardware set because in this box is six 98 millimeter grains that make up the uh, Aerotech N2220 dark matter. I really like Sparky motors because we can't fly them here, so it's always been super enticing. I mean, they're cool in their own right, but uh, the extra added taste of us not being allowed to have them. <laughs> and then uh, after I flew that L1040 last year, because I saw Taylor's at LDRS, and I was like, all right, I gotta fly one of those. And then I flew one, and I was like, I think I need a really big version of that. So, assuming everything goes decently in the COVID department, LDRS actually gets to happen, we will be flying my seven and a half inch, 12 foot tall iris back there on an Aerotech N2220 Dark Matter. And uh, I haven't simulated it actually, but, uh, oh man, what's that guy's name? Ryan, I think, he flew his eight inch Dark Star on one of these and it went 8,000 feet. Like, it's kind of crazy to think about how easy it is to misunderstand how much more powerful this motor is than one of these just because you go one letter to the next. <laughs> but this motor in that rocket would go like 2,500 feet probably. This motor loaded that rocket with this motor is probably going to weigh over 100 pounds on the pad, I'd assume. Because mm -hmm. it's without any recovery gear in it. We weighed it at one time, what, like almost 40 pounds. Yep. And that's with no electronics, no shock cord, no parachute. I don't know how much this weighs. Probably, I don't know, probably over 20 pounds when it's all assembled, I would think. With the hardware and everything. I don't know. I probably should have looked this up and had some uh, insight. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Baby's first end motor. <laughs> uh, I had a real internal struggle. I bought the hardware and even as I was sitting there getting ready to order the stuff on black saturday i was like i could have four of these four grain m motors for the cost of one of these this one flight <laughs> is going to cost me more than i don't know maybe even all the high power motors i've flown cumulatively total <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty ridiculous but it was a really good deal the hardware was a really good deal when i bought it so it's too late now. The decision's been made and it's sitting here. Yep. You're in now. My wallet's a little sore from it still, but uh, I think we'll get over it when we get to see it fly. But uh, yeah, so that's that's the plan. LDRS, 7.5 inch iris, N2220. Any in hindsight, any insight on when your level 3 attempt might be feasible? Well, I still wanted to try and do it at Spudder Rock this year. That's when I was supposed to do it last year, and then I tried to push that to... LDRS, and since that didn't happen, it looks like I'm gonna hopefully we'll have something this spring. Yeah, because I'd like to be able to take. If not, you might have to do it at LDRS. Yeah, I'd like to take either this or the 1297 to LDRS. Oh, we gotta take both of them if we don't have any launches. That's by true. Then. Yeah, because I've got a 2050. Both, yeah. <clears throat> How many motors do we have for that case now? Just those three, I guess. Yeah. But if I do get another M2050 from Rick. Uh, we have four M motor flights in one weekend. That was another thing that like hit me when I was at Airfest when I did my level three and then flew the L1040. I was like, that was like the fastest I've ever spent $500, I think. <laughs> well, no, that's definitely not true actually, but 
just like after I flew them, I was like, wow, that those two flights were five hundred dollars in propellant. Well, four hundred, I guess. We got it on sale, so it was even less than that. But just can't look at it that way. Yeah, yeah, that's not a fun way to look at rockets. Everybody's got their hobbies, and some are more expensive, and for one shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I mean, like, I was, I was talking about with guitars, too. Put it in perspective, I was scared of toting around a $1,000 guitar because I thought I was going to ruin it, but then I have a $5,500 car that I go <laughs> crash into other cars and walls on purpose, basically. So, it's all a matter of perspective. But uh, I figure you evenly distribute the cost of this end motor over the past... 12 years of me dreaming of someday flying an end motor it worked out to a yeah, pretty it comes good way deal. Down. It comes <laughs> yeah. way down. Yeah, it was pretty affordable. Seems minuscule. I've just been making emotional payments on this thing. <laughs> I took out a mortgage and bought an end motor 10 years ago. Yeah. And now it's paid off and I have it. But uh, yeah, so that's it. Also, uh, Tripoli Vegas Spring Fest is the third week of March. I think I'm going to go. Um, they're doing a launch in May at Delamar as well, and that should be interesting because they have a 50,000 foot waiver up there. The Tripoli Vegas waiver isn't great, but it's not that far of a drive. I drive to Vegas all the time. My car gets 35 miles per gallon, so I think I'm going to just go down there and film some stuff. I probably won't take anything to fly, but uh, yeah, believe it or not, I've become such an altitude junkie that I don't have anything to fly low enough. <laughs> <laughs> I could put that K1100 in the, yeah, that, even that might go too high. What did I say? The waiver is like 4,200 mm -hmm. above ground level? Yep. Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, I guess an M2050 in the seven and a half inch driver is like we talked about 10 minutes ago. That would, that would do it. Well, think about 10 years ago, we didn't consider these small Yeah. either. Yeah, I remember the first time we flew a 38 millimeter motor. The first time <laughs> I bought 54 millimeter hardware. I was like, this is insane. The size of a soda can is yep. ridiculous. And then, uh, yeah, things just escalated very quickly. But yeah, so... Um, We'll hopefully be at LDRS. I'll be at Spring Fest. Pretty sure, anyway. Um, Air Fest, I'll probably be down there again. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to fly in any of these launches other than the N2220 at LDRS. I don't know if I'll even have it in me to try and do more than that flight at LDRS and try and film <laughs> everything. But, uh, yeah, so that rocket needs a lot of things to still to be ready. So, uh, that should be good fun content. We uh, we talked about building that seven and a half inch Saturn V before winter was over, and now we've got like a month. So we might look into that. It feels like winter just started, though. Yeah, I know. But yeah, so we got a lot to do. But uh, hopefully this season will be a lot more eventful in the rocket world than last season. Sorry for the delays and uploads, but uh, yeah, now you know. I bought an end motor. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> But uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next Rocket Vlog.